Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Look what I've got. I've got the brand new Ducati Multistrada V4S. So I'm going to do a quick first impressions ride, take you with me. I've literally just ridden it a mile from my house. I'm going to do a full review next week when it gets above freezing. It's currently zero, the snow. But I'm going to take it for a ride and take you along with me as if we'd just picked this up from a dealer if you just bought it or you're taking it for a test ride so here it is it's a v4s i think it's the sport one it's got the crap of it it's got the fancy new controls and all that kind of stuff screens all sorts we'll talk about it as we go heated seat controls oh yep swung my knee into it i am has to be said wearing more layers than an onion that's an SDD gangbang because it is freezing so I'm not very flexible but hey let's go for a ride I should probably start that hi is that working right so yeah new dash new engine new everything let's take it for a poodle in zero degree temperatures do you ever do that thing <laughs> do you ever do that thing where you are you get clobbered up for a ride, you get on your bike, you finally get going and you realise you've not zipped your jacket to your trousers and you get a cold bum. I've just done that. Anyway, here it is. All singing, all dancing. Tech fest, let's be honest, new Ducati Multistrada V4. It's got everything. It's got stuff that we've not seen on bikes ever and stuff that we usually only see in the car world such as blind spot warning got little lamps here in each mirror and they light up when stuff is overtaking you on a motorway as you get in big modern cars you can adjust the brightness there's three levels of that in the menus so it doesn't have to blind you at night i've not ridden at night because it's fucking freezing during daytime that's cold enough so anyway sorry about that uh, adaptive cruise frozen ponds yeah it's uh it's got it all, and obviously this is something like 20 grand bike, so you kind of expect all this, and is that frost on the road, Jesus Christ? Um, yeah, you kind of expect it to have all those toys. My bum is being warned by the heated seat, which apparently, according to a journalist friend who borrowed this this morning, Colin Goodwin came over for a go, he, uh, he couldn't work it out turning his seat off, so he had to ride standing up. So... Yeah, the heated seat is warm enough to be too hot when it's zero degrees, so that's good. You actually adjust it using this new joystick down here. And all these new controls over here, you only get on the V4S and the top spec ones. There's obviously a base Multistrada V4, that gets the old school switches, which is still pretty modern. These new ones are all backlit, and the actual writing is backlit, not just the outline like some other manufacturers have done, naming their names. And it's all pretty easy to use. You kind of use the joystick to scroll through. It's my adaptive cruise, my music. All that kind of stuff is in there. And there's a little screen down there as well. Hopefully you can see that. And you just hold the joystick down to get down there. And you can flick through all your trips and reset them. Then hold it back up to get to the top screen. It is so easy. I've worked that out within a mile, so there we go. He is dropping lots of lovely shit on the road, isn't he? Let's go and do some dual cabbage way and see what it's like. Initial impressions, oh, actually no, before I start talking about the bike in too much detail, I'll give some context, and that is that I used to own a Multistrada, uh, the old V-Twin, when it was a 1200 before it got DVT. Uh, not deep vein thrombosis, the Ducati variable valve stuff, uh, 2013 bike, so I've had some experience with these, and um, <laughs> this is a whole different ball game already, simply because, obviously, Multistrada, adventure bike, go on big tours, ride anyway, like, it's comfortable, but because it was always a big V-twin, it was still, no matter what Ducati did with you know, twin spark heads, whatever, DVT, it was always a lumpy twin. You couldn't get away from that, it's just physics, mate. This V4 is so, so smooth. Like, first gauge, let the clutch out, trundle around sand, you're not always, you know, waiting for the bike to start going, uh, 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 
just doesn't do it. Just doesn't do it. So I think the spike is going to be a massive upgrade for owners of the V Twin who, you know, they will be saying that they love the character, the lumpiness. But I've opened this up briefly, and uh, yeah, does does still have character. It just doesn't jolt. Right, quick shift up and down as standard. I am being very ginger because as you saw, there's ice on the road. Ah, you're going to move over? No, you're just going to drive at me. How considerate. Right, bit of front wheel lift. <laughs> I shift up to second gear. Not much. Um, it's ballistically quick and smooth. Uh, at a 50 limit, I'll get to 70 in a bit. I'll go a bit faster then. Uh, the screen I've got. And it's highest setting, I'm six foot three, a bit fat, bald, sad, like, no, uh, I'm quite tall. And actually, that screen's really good in its higher setting. I'm getting some wind noise across the vent on top of my helmet, but usually I'm deafened by screens on adventure bikes. I put it down and it gets a bit louder, but I'm not being buffeted, so uh, yeah. First impressions are, it's a really well designed screen, it's got a little cutout in it, you probably can't see. Just to um, mix the turbulence up a bit and probably smooth the flow. I'm really liking this already. As I said, I'm not going to be absolutely hooning this because it is freezing. I phoned up Ducati and said, could I have it for another half a week? Because it's meant to warm up next week and Gay said yes, so it's going to be 10 degrees on Monday, so I'm going to take it out for a proper browse then. As I said, these are just first impressions. I'll do a consolidated thing. Oh, look, look, blind spot warning. That's good, isn't it? That's actually quite useful. I thought that was going to be a bit of a... Um, don't open that, put the key in. I thought it was going to be a bit of a gimmick, but actually, when you're doing long distances, sometimes you do tend to, you know, not be focusing on your mirrors as much as you should be. Obviously, it doesn't remove the need to do a lifesaver when you're changing lanes or anything like that. But it's useful tech, and that just that did just work. So um, there we go. It's very easy to turn in. I won't absolutely beans it out here because it's cold. Oh, there we go. Full throttle in second gear. <laughs> right. Okay, let's get a few things out of the way. It's nowhere near as fast as a Panigale V4. It's got, what, 40 horsepower less? It's not designed for that. It's designed to be usable in the real world and designed to have really long service intervals. It still sounds like a Panigale V4 through the airbox. That's really cool. That is really cool. Okay, this might have just gone to the top of my Soul 4 adventure bike engine lead table that I keep in my head. Wow, yeah, that's really cool. You get shift light on the dash. The digital tack kind of rips around and then that corner starts going yellow. Uh, I'm in comfort mode, I might switch to sport mode and get to twisty roads and see how we go. Actually, let's just do that now, so suspension's like. So, I'm in touring, there's also enduro, urban, and sport. Close throttle, I'm now in sport mode. Uh, while we're on the switch gear, there's a preload button here, which you can press and switch between Rider, rider and baggage, two riders, two baggages, and uh, there's no fat load mode, but hey, I'll leave it in the rider. It's dead easy to use this, actually. Uh, very clearly, Ducati have looked long and hard at the BMW R1250 GS's screen, and that BMW TFT screen is the bollocks. It's so good. This is actually shows more stuff, and it's still easy to use. I do keep really going for the joystick instead of the indicator switch, but that's just user error and getting used to it. Brakes, uh, actually a reasonably soft lever, not grabby, but you know, it goes from soft to, oh shit, I need to stop quite well in that transition. Oh, I like it already. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, it is ridiculously fast. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that has got, from a brief test, all the performance you could ever want, which you would kind of hope so, wouldn't you? From 170 whatever our horsepower is. Was it 160? I can't remember. I've, uh, as you can tell, I've come to this very ill-prepared. I haven't done my research yet. 
I want to try some adaptive cruise control in a bit. I know lots of people out there saying I don't like adaptive cruise control in a car, so why would I want it on a motorbike? Um, I drive lots of cars. I like adaptive cruise control in cars. Once you learn to trust it, which takes a week or two, then it, it's just a happy day. So I'm happy to try it on a bike. Right, overtake, so good. Fucking hell! Right, okay. <laughs> Beautiful tiny little lift of the front wheel there, accelerating in the mid-range in third gear. Oh dear, this is bad, isn't it? I'm going to want one of these. <laughs> right, I'm being impartial. I am trying to think of uh, things I don't like about it. It's got it's firmed up in sport mode. I can't believe the confidence it's actually giving me through, kind of through my arse as much as the handlebars to actually do some corners, considering it's one degree and the dashboard is covered in ice warnings. Yeah, it doesn't have the same instant mid-range, so like, you know, on the V Twin one, if you're at 4,000 RPM in fourth gear and you gave it a handful, it would go. This takes a little bit longer, but, you know, that's kind of to be expected. Just shift down the gear. The quick shifter, super smooth so far. Also, I've only done about 10 miles. Oh, the drive out of the corners is mm, creamy and lovely. Oh no, I've got to take someone. <laughs> okay, yeah, third gear. Off the little bumps in the road, even when everything's switched on, it will lift the front a little bit, like a tiny bit, just skip across the road. That's really cool though, isn't it? That's what you want. This is exciting. I like this. Um, Alright, I'll comment on comfort once I've actually put some miles on it in my next review, but initial impressions are just comfortable. Um, from memory, I'm a bit more length forward than I am on a GS, but not much. The bars kind of come back to meet me. Oh man, I want one of these. Does anybody want a hypermotard? <laughs> Right, second gear, 30 miles an hour, it's a bit buzzy actually. Not, not vibration-y, there's a bit through the foot pegs. Right, second gear into a 60 limit. <laughs> it sounds like a race bike at the top end, once you get above 8,000 RPM, it sounds like a V4. I was a bit scared, because this has only got a 10,000 RPM red line, which is like, it's not very high is it, for a multi-cylinder bike but you still get the noise before you bash into it. And actually, the front starts lifting about seven, 8,000 RPM really naturally. Um, yeah, this, this does need anti-wheelie. From all the reports I've read of this bike so far, I thought it was going to be feel quite tame, quite sanitized, but no, it's just smooth. And I think that's what perhaps people are saying. You don't come to Ducati expecting it to be smooth, certainly not the old V-twin Multistrada. Right, let's see if I can scramble my brain down my favourite tip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> uh... Yeah, you could, uh, you could have a lot of fun on this. I can't wait for it to warm up properly. That noise is addictive. Yeah, Jesus. This is a, this is a thing. This is a thing. Well, I was gonna go the short way home, but I don't think I am. <laughs> well, the electronic stick don't appear there, the traction control. That's fine. Don't want to fall off and break back. So yeah, as I said, full review is coming on this next week. Please do drop a comment and let me know what you want me to find out. If there's anything you want me to test, I'm not going to take it off-road because I'm too fat for that, to be honest. I know the cat, he's given it a 19 inch front wheel to give it more off-road ability, but it's a big heavy bike and I was one of the first in the UK to ride it. I just don't want to break it, frankly. Whoa. The seat, you can't, you can move forward and back an inch or two. Uh, the pillion seat locks you in. My foot just keeps coming off of that foot peg, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, the bike's a bit narrower between my feet than I predicted. Uh, that's probably my fault. 
the tip of the gear lever is foldy. I don't know if that makes any difference to how much it costs when you drop it. What I would say, obviously, is because the mirrors have got those lights in for the blind spot warning system, they're going to cost a lot of money if you drop it, I would have thought. But it's a 20 grand motorbike, so you're probably going to expect to pay for part prices quite a lot anyway. I really like the details. The mirror stems, they're really solid, I guess, cast metal. But they're beautifully finished and they've got some sculpted lines on. They're not just, you know, some old shit out of the parts bin. There's actually some nice details, right? Oh man, I feel like I could go for miles on this thing. I shouldn't because COVID time, stay local, protect the NHS state and save pies. But I am very, very happy on this. Yeah, just like nothing behind me, look. Right, so clutch out. Nine miles now, it ticks along from first. You pick up the throttle. There's a little bit of jerkiness there, but that's just because I'm in sport mode, I think. Oh. It's civilised, yet a bit rabid. Rabid. We've got to choose diseases, haven't we, to say something fast. Wait, this is so fast, it's like pure corona. Okay, brakes are... the brakes are good, they're not super sharp sports bike kind of things. Mm. This is a very nice package. I mean, I am aware I'm sitting on a bike that costs probably more than most people's cars, but you kind of feel like you're getting your money's worth. <laughs> okay, yeah. Weedy's off the throttle a little bit easier than my hard motor. Yeah, one thing that I can predict will be a negative of this bike will be the fuel consumption. What are we doing here? Oh, there's tracks to cutting hedges. Let's see if we can get past a few cars before we get to the corner of doom. Yeah, one thing I predict will be great on this bike will be fuel economy. Uh, let's see if I can find out what I can get in. Uh, average consumption 36 and a half mpg this has been written by me on one other, one other journalist and um, he had it for an hour and a half and if you're riding a bike for an hour and a half you're not going to take it easy on it either. so yeah i've read reports of people getting about 40 but we'll see what i get and i'll let you know in my full review next week oh yes <coughs> oh coffee coffee Uh, one thing I will say is this has got the Kravitch N can on it. I imagine that's just a slip on that changes the noise very, very slightly. Uh, it's not howling. I'm not hearing the exhaust at all when I pin it. What I'm hearing is the engine and the airbox through the tank. And I love the noise. Um, but yeah, I think the Kravitch probably saves a few kilos. Probably not many because it's still going to be red legal. It just looks nice, and it's got some carbon bling on it. Um, what else can I tell you in my first impressions? I've discovered that you can change, hopefully you can see, the fuel range from a bar to tell you how many miles you've got left, so you can have either. Um, there's probably ways to change the way the dash looks, but I've not fucked about with that. It's, uh, I thought I was going to get on it, to be honest, and be bewildered, because there's so much stuff going on. All the riding modes, but... This stuff is super, super easy, super simple. Right, uh, I've got the adaptive cruise control on. It's easy to set, you just hit that like you normally would on a Ducati, and then you can, well, let's see what it does. I've got it set to near, so as we get close to this car, I imagine it'll start, yeah, there we go. Oh, look, look, slowing down, no hands. Uh, so yeah, it's just like on a car. Let's uh, change lane to see if it speeds up. There we go. It's just like in the car. That kicked in quite gently. If I want to go back behind this car. Yeah, it doesn't just slam the anchors on. It slows down quite gradually. There you go, I like it. <laughs> but I like tech and I'm used to adaptive cruising cars. So, you know, 
if you're an old fuddy duddy, you might not like it. Right, let's increase the speed a bit. Sorry, parts of this video have been a little bit muffled, by the way. I've got a new helmet, as I said, and oh, um, obviously, my microphone has moved slightly. I've changed it, so hopefully, you can hear me as clear as day now. So, apologies if I sound like I've been speaking through the side of a sheep. Can someone invent heated levers? Brake lever and clutch lever, because heated grips are fine. Ooh, obviously had hill hold control on that. Um, I've actually just filled this up with petrol, and what's quite cool, he says, avoiding massive hole in the floor, is, did you even look? Did you even look? What's quite cool, sorry. <laughs> Just having a go, idiots. Uh, I didn't turn the bike off when I filled it. I, I turned the engine off, obviously. Um, but kept the screen on. And the fuel range, actually, you could see it going up in real time as you fill it up. Don't know if that's deliberate or if it's just how the sensors work. But yeah, it's quite good. Quite cool. There you go, here's a boring real world test. I'm in a 40 limit. Look, I can do 35 in fifth gear and accelerate. You get a tiny bit of chug, but nothing like you would never be able to do that on the V twin. Obviously, it's uh, it's much more tractable. This engine, hmm, you can carry a higher gear, and it's smoother, smoother. Riding in the snow, I'm riding in the snow. Look at it go, Mr. Multistrada in the snow. Ah, driving and riding in snow is really hypnotic, isn't it? Because <laughs> it, it, it makes you wince. Oh, I got a flurry of snow in my helmet. It just tickled my head. How did that happen? Riding in snow in sport mode. Hmm. Sport mode is not snow mode. Yeah, I keep getting tickled. I think I've got a vent open and I'm getting a flurry, a flurry to the scalp every now and then. I'm probably going to call it a day there. I'll film some more stuff. Might slip it in if it's fun. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching. I really do uh, mean that. I appreciate you lovely subscribers trying to grow the channel. Um, go and check out my car channel, Tim Brady Drivester. I've just filmed a BMW M5 and a BMW M440i and I'm going to drive a new Porsche Taycan tomorrow. So hopefully that will be up soon and I'll see you very very soon for a full review of the Ducati Multistrada V4 Pass. It's been lovely knowing you. Goodbye.